Did you know that the Bible talks about the coming of a prophet for our time? Did you know that the same way that God has his children in this world, the devil has his children too? And they have been children of the devil since day one. Why are human beings the only species to be able to improve physically while others didn't? What really happened in the Garden of Eden? Did they eat a simple fruit or something else? It's talking about the point when human genetics were interfered with and genetically manipulated. And so humans became at that point themselves a hybrid which had a great infusion, I would suggest, of what I would call archon genetics, symbolically the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Welcome to my channel guys, thanks for the love and the support that you guys have been showing me on all of my videos and I really appreciate it. So today I'm going to talk about hiding things in the Bible that 99% of Christians ignore. Yes you heard me, things that almost 99% of Christians never heard before and you may be one of them. So I'm going to use Hebrew 13.8 as a formula. To make you understand that Jesus Christ, God, is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Which means that God doesn't change. So if you want to know what God will do in the future, you have to look at what he did in the past. Because the Bible says he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And the Bible went even further and says there is nothing new under the sun. And I'm going to show you how you can use this formula to apply it on anything in the Bible. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the coming of a prophet. The Bible talks about the coming of a prophet that almost 99% of Christians ignore. But I know that my Muslim friends will be happy right now thinking that I'm talking about the prophet Muhammad. But I have 1000 reasons to believe that it is not the prophet Muhammad and I can prove it in the Bible. So if you want to know a few of those reasons, I made a video about it and I will put the link on the description down below. Now let's talk about that prophet. But before I do so, please don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. Please do it right now. Thank you so much. Now I just want to remind you of something. Every time that God sent a prophet in this world, even when Jesus himself came in this world, the majority always fail to recognize them. Why? Because they don't look at the scriptures, which is the word of God. So there's two important things that I want you to keep in mind. The first one is that the name of a prophet is never given before his coming. For example, with Jesus Christ, the Bible talks about the coming of the Messiah. But never once the Bible mentioned the name of Jesus Christ before his coming or his time until the angel told Mary that she is going to have a baby and they should call him Jesus Christ. It's the same thing with John the Baptist. So here is the scriptures that talk about the coming of John. But they never mention his name. Instead, the Bible calls him the voice of the man who cried in the wilderness. Now, since the Bible doesn't give you the name of the prophet before his coming, now the question is, how do we recognize them when they come? It's simple. 1. They always identify themselves according to the scriptures that talks about them. And 2. They accomplish everything that is written about them. For example, here, they approach John the Baptist. They wanted to know who he was and they asked him the question to know if he was the Christ. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, has said the prophet Isaiah. Did you hear that? His whole response was to show them the scriptures that talks about his coming. And the same thing happened with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his greetings, how shall you believe my words? 
See, Jesus always talked about the scriptures. That's my point. He didn't just say, believe in me, I'm Jesus Christ. No, he refers himself according to the scriptures that talks about him in the Bible. I know that you may say, get straight to the point, man. Show us the prophet. But the reason why I showed you all those scriptures is because I don't want you to believe in me, but I want you to believe in the scriptures that I'm about to show you to prove you that the Bible is talking about the coming of a prophet for this time. So I made this to make it look easy for you guys. The yellow line is the timeline and here is the birth of Jesus Christ which separate the time in two big parts BC and AD. BC means before Jesus Christ and AD means after Jesus Christ. And here is the cross. After that you have the second and the third coming of Jesus Christ. So we all know that Jewish are the chosen people of God as a nation. Even Jesus Christ said, He only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This was the time of Israel. From the Old Testament to Jesus Christ to the cross was the time of Israel. But after they rejected Jesus Christ, God turned His back to Israel. That's why today Jewish people don't believe in Jesus. Because God blinded them until all the Gentiles will be gone. Even Paul said the same thing. Please, read all the scriptures I'm gonna put it there for you guys on the screen. Now that God turned his back on Israel and blinded them, this is our time. We are the chosen one for this particular time. Jesus Christ has the perfect sacrifice. He died for the sin of the whole world. Now we are waiting for his second coming according to these scriptures. In the verse 16, the Bible basically says that the dead in Christ will rise first and the Lord himself will descend from the heaven. In the verse 17 it says, Then we, which are alive and remained, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Did you hear that? To meet the Lord in the air. This is different from his first coming. The first time, Jesus walk on the earth, but this time he will come down and we will go up. His feet will not touch the ground and it will be unexpected. That's why the Bible says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, which means that when nobody expect him to come. And the Bible says, then shall be two in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. So after the second coming of Jesus Christ, God will open the eyes of Israel and they will recognize that Jesus was the Messiah that they have killed. They have to because without Jesus Christ there is no salvation for nobody. And this is their time right here. So now let's talk about the third coming of Jesus Christ. The first one was publicly, everybody saw him. The second one will be like a thief visiting your house unexpected in the middle of the night. It will happen secretly but the third one will be public because the Bible says, every eye shall see him. Now look at the huge difference between the two scriptures that talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the third one. For the second coming, the Bible says, to meet the Lord in the air, which means that he will come down, but his feet will not touch the ground. And for the third one, the Bible says, and his feet shall stand in that day up on the mount on olives, which means that his feet will touch the ground. Now that you understand about the three comings of Jesus Christ, now let's talk about the coming of a prophet that almost 99% of Christians ignore. It all starts with a prophet who lived before Jesus Christ. His name was Elijah. And I made a video about people who challenge God and fail. I talk about him on that video. I will put the link on the description down below. So Elijah was trying to bring back the heart of people of Israel to the true God. That's why he challenged all the 400 false prophets of Baal. And when he was praying to God to send the fire, in the end of his prayer, he said, Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their heart back again. Please, 
It is very important to remember these little details right here. The last thing he said was that you Lord are God and that you are turning their heart back again. Remember this. So after the prophet Elijah was gone, we can see that his spirit was still on the earth because Elijah told his student Elisha, tell me what can I offer you before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, I want the double portion of your spirit. And Elijah responded to him and said, If you see me, as I am taken away from you, it will be yours. But if not, then it will not be so. And what happened was, Elisha saw him leave and receive the double portion of his spirit. In this scripture, we can see that Elisha started doing the same miracle than Elijah. And when people saw him doing so, they said, he has the spirit of Elijah. What I'm trying to demonstrate is that God used the spirit of Elijah five times in the Bible. And I already showed you two of them. The first one was Elijah himself. The second one was Elisha who had the double portion of the spirit of Elijah. And the third one is John the Baptist. In Malachi 3.1 the Bible says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. So John's mission was to prepare the way for the Christ. But before his birth, an angel appeared to his father and told him that they will have a son and they shall name him John. And in the verse 16, the angel said, Because of John, many sons of Israel will turn back to the Lord their God. Now listen, in 17 the Bible says, And he will go on before the Lord with the spirit and the power of Elijah. So as you can see, before the first coming of Jesus Christ, God sent a prophet named John with the spirit of Elijah. And before the third coming of Jesus Christ, God will send two prophets, and one of them will have a spirit of Elijah. Let me show you. Just like I told you, after the second coming of Jesus Christ, there will be a lot of wars, a lot of things will happen, and God will send two prophets to Israel to open their eyes. So the Bible describes them in the verse 6 of the book of Revelation chapter 11. It says, These witnesses have the power to shut the sky so that no rain will fall during the day of their prophecy, and power to turn the water into blood. Who turned water into blood? Moses. Who shut the sky? The prophet Elijah. And Jesus confirms it. And I'm going to put it there for you guys on the screen. We all know that before the first coming of Jesus Christ, he sent the prophet with his spirit of Elijah. His name was John the Baptist. And before the third coming of Jesus Christ, he will send two prophets and one of them will have the spirit of Elijah. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday and forever. So the question is, why don't we expect somebody to prepare us for the second coming of Jesus Christ? Because before his first coming, we saw John the Baptist preparing people for his coming. So why don't we expect somebody to prepare us for the second coming of Jesus Christ? But I know why. Because you never heard about these things before. But let me show you that the Bible is talking about the coming of a prophet before the second coming of Jesus Christ. On Malachi 3.1, the Bible is talking about the coming of John the Baptist. I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. On Malachi 4, which is the last chapter of the Old Testament, the Bible is talking about the coming of another prophet. It says, For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the arrogant and every evildoer will stumble. The day is coming when I will set them ablaze, say the Lord of hosts. Not a roof or branch will be left to them. As you can see here, the Bible is talking about the day of vengeance of God. But this is not for the first coming of Jesus Christ, because for the first coming, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to blind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the freedom to the prisoner, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now the question is, why does Jesus hand the verse there? Because the verse doesn't hand there. And the rest of the verse says, and the day of our God's vengeance. That's why Jesus didn't read that part, because he didn't come for vengeance. He came as a sacrifice to die for everybody. Now let's get back to Malachi 4. 
Now that you understand that it's not about the first coming of Jesus Christ, let's read the verse 5 now. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The verse 6 is talking about one spirit, which is the spirit of Elijah, which will operate in two different people living in two different times. Just keep in mind that this prophecy is even before the coming of John the Baptist. The verse 6 says, And he will turn the heart of the father to their children. This is John the Baptist. Why? Because before his birth, the angel told his father that he will turn the heart of the father to their children. That's his mission. But it doesn't end there. It says, And the heart of the children to their fathers. This is not for John the Baptist. So you may ask me the question, how can the same verse talk about two different prophets from two different times? Well, this is not the first time in the Bible that the same verse is talking about two different people in two different times. I'm gonna show you in the Bible because the same thing happened with Jesus Christ. So when Jesus was reading Isaiah 61 in the temple, in the end he said, to proclaim the year of Lord's favor. After that he said, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. But if you go to Isaiah 61, you will see that the verse doesn't end there. Jesus didn't read the full verse. The full verse says, To proclaim the year of Lord's favor and the day of God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn. See, the same verse is talking about two different things from two different times. The first one is to proclaim the year of Lord's favor and the second one is the day of God's vengeance. That's why Jesus didn't read the other part. Because for the first time, Jesus came to give himself as a sacrifice, not to venge anybody. Almost 95% of Christian pastors will tell you that the Elijah of Malachi 4-5 that I just showed you is John the Baptist and that there is not another prophet to come. Now listen, Jesus himself recognized that there is a prophet to come. Now this is after the death of John the Baptist. Matthew 17, the disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Now listen, Jesus replied, Elijah does indeed come, and he will restore all things. He will in the future. But I tell you that Elijah has already come in the past, already come and they did not recognize him, but they have done to him whatever they wished. In the same way the Son of Man will suffer in their hands. The disciples understood that he was speaking about John the Baptist, one in the past and one in the future. The one in the past is John the Baptist cause he was already dead. Jesus is talking about two Elijah. One in the future, Jesus said, Elijah does indeed come and he will restore all things and one in the past, which is John the Baptist. The one in the future is the messenger that God will send us to prepare us for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus said about him. He will restore all things. And Paul, after Jesus Christ, said the same thing. Read, here Paul is talking about Jesus Christ. He said, heaven must take him in until the time comes for the restoration of all things. Remember which God announced it long ago through his holy prophet. Now everything is clear. Malachi 4.5, the Bible says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord. After that, Paul said, the heaven will hold Jesus in until the restoration of all things. And Jesus said, Elijah will come and restore all things. What more do you want to believe that there is a prophet to come? Even the last book of the Bible is talking about the coming of somebody who shall come and fulfill all God's mystery. So now tell me, who is that person? All I want you to do is to do some research about everything that I said. Do some research in the Bible, ask some questions. You will see that everything that I said is the truth. Just think about it. What if God really sent us a prophet? and you refuse to accept him, to believe in him.
We have video footage of William Branham, but before we show that, tell me what his ministry was like. Well, you know, I never knew uh, William Branham, of course, but from what I understand, he moved in a realm of power that was unlike anything that many historians say since the early church. Uh, there was a divine presence, and that's really what we're after. You know, it's not about a man or a woman. It's all about someone that can become the tabernacle of God, that God himself will come down in a meeting and begin to demonstrate himself doing what the Bible said would happen, the greater works. And so that happened. William Branham moved in that realm, and the one thing that characterized his meetings most of all was the power of God's presence. And that's what we're after, ultimately, that God himself will begin to attend our meetings. I mean, I'm in awe when I see he just looks at a total stranger. Mm -hmm. He knows what they were doing that day. He knows their name. He knows where they live. And he also knows what's wrong with them. Right. He doesn't even have to ask. And then they're healed. Let's take a look at this video footage. Of course, you're sick. And you're suffering with uh, a condition that's uh, it's a dark spirit around you. It's death. And it's in a form of cancer. And the cancer is located on the breast. And you're seeing you're examined by someone strong and it's a you got a, a ruptured condition. And the rupture is in the bowel. And you have a stomach trouble also. A severe heart trouble. It caused you fainting uh, uh, here a few days ago. You're sitting sideways on the side of a bed and nearly passed out looking towards your window. Are those things the truth? Yes, that all was true. All true. I believe you're from out of town. You come from a capital too, Richmond, yep. Virginia. You have a cancer. It's in your inside of your mouth on your jaw. Is that right? You want to go home and be well? Accept word. Jesus as your healer. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may it leave the man. Go away from him. Amen. God bless you, dear. Right after that, Gordon Lindsay brought Brother Branham to Portland, Oregon. E logo depois disso, Gordon Lindsay trouxe o irmão Branham para Portland, em Oregon. In the big city auditorium that seats 8,000 people. Em um grande auditório da cidade que cabiam 8 mil pessoas. We sat in the third balcony. E nós sentamos na terceira galeria. This gentle little man came out on the platform. E este homem pequeno e gentil chegou na plataforma. He was like Christ to me. Ele era como Cristo para mim. He spoke very careful. Ele falava com muito cuidado. Uh, if you know that name, uh, forget all the silly things that have happened in later years. Se você conhece esse nome, esqueça as coisas estúpidas que aconteceram anos depois. But at the time that I knew him, mas na época que eu conheci ele, he represented Christ to me. Ele representou Cristo para mim. He preached tender. Ele pregou suave, but firm. Mas firme. And when he got through preaching, e quando ele terminou de pregar, hundreds of people came and accepted Christ. Centenas de pessoas vieram e aceitaram Jesus. I wanted to be able to do that. Eu queria ser capaz de fazer aquilo. Then he called for the sick. Depois ele fez um apelo aos enfermos. Marvelous miracles took place as we watched. E milagres maravilhosos aconteceram e nós vimos. I had my second vision. Eu tive a minha segunda visão. I saw Jesus in that man. Eu vi Jesus Cristo naquele homem. I haven't got time to tell you all that happened. Eu não tenho tempo para te dizer tudo o que aconteceu ali. There was a girl that was born deaf and dumb. Mas havia uma garota que nasceu surda e muda. Remember now, I was a noise-making Pentecostal. E lembre-se, eu era um pentecostal barulhento. We were scared of devils. E nós tínhamos medo dos demônios. And if we thought someone had a devil. E se a gente imaginasse que alguém tinha um demônio. We were very careful. A gente ia ter muito cuidado. And the best we could do is yell at them. E o melhor que eu podia fazer era gritar com o demônio. And gang up on them. E lutar com eles. And the more noise we made. E quanto mais barulho a gente fazia. The more the greater the possibility maybe they would go. Maior a possibilidade que talvez o diabo sair. I was a noise maker. Eu era o barulhento. I could tell you some funny stories about that. E eu posso te contar histórias engraçadas sobre isso. This man pulled this little girl to his side. Mas este pregador puxou aquela garota para perto dele. Like a father. Como um pai. And he spoke so kind to the people. E ele falava tão suave para as pessoas. He said, "Please bow your head while we 
Pray for the child. E ele disse, por favor, curva a sua cabeça enquanto vamos orar por esta criança. So we did. E nós fizemos isso. I was ready to do business. Eu estava pronto para fazer alguma coisa. I'm telling you, he needed me. Eu te digo, ele precisava de mim. This was a big deal. Isto era um grande negócio. I mean, I never, I never tackled a deaf and dumb devil. Eu nunca havia atacado um demônio de surdez antes. This is a serious challenge. Isto era um desafio grande. So you imagine how I'm revving up. Então você imagine como eu estava wow. todo reverente. Uh, you know, this is going to be a big thing. Porque eu acho que isso vai ser uma grande coisa. This man, e este homem, I'll never forget his prayer. Eu nunca vou esquecer da oração que ele fez. Just quiet. Ele era calmo, but firm. Mas firme. Said, thou dumb and deaf spirit. Ele disse, Espírito surdo e mudo. Eu te repreendo em nome de Jesus Cristo de Nazaré. Leave the child Saia dessa criança. And enter her no more. E não entre nela nunca mais. Silence. Silêncio. Wow, I was Uau, eu estava me tremendo. We're work on this deal now. Nós vamos trabalhar com isso agora. And you know what he did? E sabe o que, é que ele fez? I was shocked. Eu fiquei chocado. He said, "Audience." Ele disse, "Audiência." You can lift your heads now. Você pode levantar a cabeça agora. The evil spirit has left the child. O espírito mal já deixou a criança. And she's well. Ela está bem. I thought, "How do you know?" E eu pensei, "Como que ele sabe?" We ain't even made noise yet. A gente nem começou a fazer barulho ainda. How? That girl was healed. Aquela garota foi curada. I saw Jesus in that man. Eu vi Jesus naquele homem. And once I met Brother William Branham, a man used by God mightily. So he used to tell me how God used him. So that was the time. That was the turning point in my ministry. Till then I was praying for the people in faith. That was the time the Lord was trying to show the names of the people. Sometimes the place from which they come and the details are where they are seated in the big audience. So this is something which is unprecedented in the history of Christianity in India.